Welcome back, America. We have with us Kenneth Marcus, former Assistant Secretary of Education for Civil Rights under Donald Trump. He founded and is chairman of the Brandeis Center, uh, civil rights lawyers, well, and he's written a book, The Definition of Anti-Semitism. Kenneth Marcus, you see what's happening in our colleges and universities. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Nobody else has either. You see it pouring out into the streets. As the former Assistant Secretary of Education for Civil Rights, I'd like your view on this and what it can be done if we have an administration and a Department of Education that wants to do something about it. Sure, I, I have been working on this issue for over 20 years and I have to tell you that what we're seeing this year and over the last four weeks on college campuses is unlike anything that we have seen in the United States. It's unlike anything going all the way back. When Hamas committed its murders, its rape, its tortures, its atrocity, it was met with extraordinary celebration on many, many colleges and campuses, not just by students who are coming out en masse to celebrate uh, this murder, this uh, inhumanity, uh, but also uh, assaulting uh, Jewish students, uh, forcing them to be locked in a library, uh, threatening them with death, things that we have never seen before. We have campuses that can deal with the tiniest of microaggressions, real or perceived. But when there are actual macroaggressions, they're not dealing with it. These universities are all getting federal funds. And the U.S. Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights, which I formerly led during the Trump administration, has an obligation to make sure that taxpayer money is not being used to subsidize this sort of gross anti-Semitism. They can do more. They can investigate not the speech, but the conduct, and they can make sure that those who are assaulting, harassing, excluding, marginalizing Jewish students are treated the same way as those who are doing the same for any other group. What about this funding issue? Uh, universities and colleges, I believe they get significant federal funds, whether it's grants or student loans or this sort of thing. Is there anything the Department of Education, or for that matter, the Department of Justice can do to try and force proper behavior in these radicalized universities and colleges? That is the whole purpose for why we have an agency called OCR. That's the agency that I formerly ra uh, ran. And its sole obligation is to make sure that federal funds are not used to support discriminatory behavior. It does this on a whole host of other issues. It needs to do it with anti-Semitism. Now, we at the Brandeis Center are filing complaints and the Biden administration says it's waiting for complaints, but the fact is they don't have to wait. The Secretary of Education has full authority to conduct self-directed investigations on his own anytime he turns on the television or opens a newspaper and sees what's going on. And if he turns on the TV at all or reads the newspaper, then he's got to know that his education department funds are going to support these activities and it has to stop. Well, I saw a brief almost passing statement by him in which he says they're going to really start to look into this and so forth. I guess what bothers me uh, is they're only going to start to look into this. I mean, you were at the Department of Education. There was, a, I believe it was an executive order that was signed by President Trump. I believe you were one of the main authors of that executive author, uh, order. So you saw this coming. President Trump saw this coming. You began to try and do something about it. Uh, before uh, Joe Biden took over. What did the uh, Biden administration do with this executive order or this document or this, this regulation that was intended to address, to some extent, anti-Semitism on our campuses? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because it's both important and timely. The Biden administration claims that they have not rescinded the Trump executive order on combating anti-Semitism, even though they've rescinded many of President Trump's other orders. They say it's still in force and effect, but there's no indication that they're really using it the way it needs to be used. They have promised, the White House has promised through the unified agenda that it will issue regulations that will codify and extend President Trump's executive order on combating anti-Semitism. But it has now twice delayed 
uh, these uh, regulations that it has promised. Currently, their self-imposed extended deadline is December of this year. That's just next month, but they're not talking about it. There's no mention of it in the recent OCR report to Congress. There's no mention of it in the National Strategy on Anti-Semitism. And yet it's supposed to be here next month. I think we should be asking, where is this, where is this uh, NPRM, this notice that has been promised over and over again? We need to see some action from the Education Department. What exactly did this executive order do that President Trump signed? I don't believe any president has ever signed an executive order like this in combating anti-Semitism. Is that correct? Nobody's ever done anything like that. We did see a significant policy advance under President uh, George W. Bush. We actually saw some good action under President Obama. Uh, with President Trump, we saw something unprecedented. With President Biden, we've seen some good words, but not yet real action. The executive order on combating anti-Semitism signed by President Trump was a game changer. It made very clear that Jews, Jewish students, are protected under Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. That was important. It had been informally understood since uh, a guidance letter that I had issued in 2004, but this was the first time it was elevated to the level of an executive order. More importantly, President Trump directed OCR and other agencies to use an important definition, the so-called IRA working definition, in all applicable cases. Now, you might think that a particular definition can't do very much, but it does make clear that not every criticism of Israel is anti-Semitic but some activity, some conduct against Jews relating to Israel, and we're seeing Jews being beaten up, followed, harassed, et cetera. Some of it is anti-Semitic, and it provides very specific standards for dealing with it. Without those standards, without that tool, OCR seems to be rudderless. They really do need to take the Trump executive order and turn it into something more durable, a regulation that simply says what President Donald Trump said. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.